What is up guys, it's Jordan here and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video we're going to be talking about 5 reasons why you may not be getting kills or many kills in Rainbow Six Siege. So I hope this video does help you guys out and I hope you do enjoy it. So hopping straight into this video, the first point on my list of 5 is bad operator choice. Now this is broken down into 2 points for me, this is the way I see it. When it comes to operator choice, there's 2 things you need to factor in if you're making the wrong choice or not. When it comes down to choosing a bad operator, there are 2 points you need to think of. The first one is that you may just be simply choosing a, an operator that's renowned for having bad guns. There are some operators that just aren't very good and that's always changing with Siege because they're always patching the game and introducing different changes and fixes for certain characters. When DLC characters come out they tend to be the most powerful in the game for a short while although like, their guns are always like extremely strong as well until they get patched. So really the best thing you can do for this is to continuously keep checking online for the best operators. There's loads and loads of pages out there that are constantly updated. The reason I haven't made many videos on operators is because it does change a lot. It's always changing so I'd, I'd need to make videos like once every three or four weeks to keep it up to date but I have got a few videos on operators so I'll link them in the description but do bear in mind that some of them were made a couple of months ago so anything could change in Siege. The videos are still a good starting point. The second point is you're choosing an operator that you just aren't very good at playing at and it's fine that you're not good at some operators. Everyone has operators that they're very good at and some that they aren't so good at. So if you're just continuously not getting kills, not landing shots, try switching out an operator. If you're using an operator with a submachine gun or something like that, a shorter range gun, maybe try going for an assault rifle. If you're defending you've got Jaeger or if you're attacking you've got a wide selection of assault rifles you can choose. Just experiment until you find something that works for you but make sure you do experiment with different guns in casual. Don't go playing your operators in ranked because you will most likely end up getting yourself killed um, even more if you're playing unknown characters. But yeah, just try and find an operator that works for you, one that you like, enjoy and are good at, and try and stick with them for a while so that you sort of get used to them and you'll get better and better the more you play that character. So my second point is aiming, and that can be simply that your aim is slightly off. It could be that you're aiming too low, you're not aiming for headshots, or you're just spraying around too much and not actually hitting the targets properly. I've discussed this a couple of times in previous videos, but the first main thing to make sure you're doing is make sure that you're aiming high enough so that when you go around corners or you peek things, if you do see someone, make sure you're aiming high enough to hit them in the head as soon as you start firing. If you're aiming really low, you're not going to hit them, you're going to miss and you're going to get yourself killed. The second thing is to make sure that when you do try to get a kill that you don't just spray and pray because a lot of the time you will miss and when you're playing in the higher ranks the other team will just destroy you if you're spraying. All it takes is one shot to kill in Siege if it's a headshot. So even if you fire 30 bullets and the enemy fires one bullet, if their one bullet's on target and your 30 aren't, they will still beat you so make sure that when you do aim, if you have the opportunity to line up your shot and they haven't seen you yet, definitely do. Don't just shoot randomly the second you see them if they haven't seen you because as soon as you shoot they are going to notice you and if you're not aiming correctly they're going to kill you. If they have seen you, spraying is fine but try to do it in short controlled bursts. Don't just spray for the entirety of the clip. Try and you know control your shots, maybe like three or four shots at a time to get a headshot. Ideally you want to get it in the first shot if you can. Point number three is not working with teammates. This applies to you even if you're queuing solo. Just because you're playing on your own and not playing with a team doesn't mean you can't communicate. If you are playing the game and you have a microphone, you try and use it the second the round starts. If you start speaking and communicating, you will encourage others to start talking as well. Vice versa, if someone else is calling out targets and communicating and you have a microphone, reply to them, get involved, engage with them. Don't just be quiet or don't worse, don't even type it in because if you start typing it in, people are going to assume that you have microphones and those that do have mics will stop talking if they think that you're just going to use the text chat. Not just you, but if most people are using the text chat instead of microphones, then they won't talk either. And text chat is a real distraction. If you have to stop to type, that takes you out of the game for a second. Like you are not in control of what's going on. And the amount of people that I have seen complain about getting shot when typing, when really it's their own fault. If you're typing and you get shot, that's your fault. You can't blame the game. I've seen the craziest things of people complaining, like, oh, Siege's chat system's too shit. It pulls you of the game and that's because it's not really meant to be used it's mainly just there for people that don't physically have microphones so if you do have one and you're still using the text chat or just not talking or ignoring people I know it can sometimes be a bit nerve-wracking if you're not a very confident person but trust me if you want to get into the higher ranks you're going to need to start communicating with randoms teams everyone you play with you need to communicate with Point number four is distancing. This is a tip that I think is very important but I've only discussed briefly in one video and really should be talked about more because not that many people discuss it but that is to make sure again going back to weapons that you know the type of weapon you're using and what range it becomes non-effective at. 
If you're using a shotgun and you start shooting at someone all the way down the hallway, it's not going to kill them. It might maybe knock off a couple of HP if you're lucky, but all it's going to do is to completely expose you, and if the enemy has an assault rifle or anything that's slightly long range, they are going to wreck you. The same if you're using an assault rifle and if you if you know that there's someone with a shotgun camping a room, don't go charging into it because all it's going to take is one shot close range and you are dead. In fact, with a shotgun they will probably be able to kill you before you even have a chance to aim for the head. Siege is one of those games where you really need to adapt to every situation if you want to win. Charging in is not always the answer, it's more, unlike a lot of games, Siege requires a lot of planning and thinking which is why communication is so important. So if you find yourself in a situation where you just cannot get the person that you're trying to attack, don't worry about losing a kill, just try and get a teammate to kill them because getting a teammate to kill the target you can't get is better than you just losing a kill. Some people like will refuse to communicate because they want to get more kills than everyone else on the leaderboards and really you got to stop thinking about your personal kills when it comes to ranked because it's about the whole team working together, not just how many kills you can get, not about how good you are at carrying the team. Even if you are destroying and carrying like a pro, you may still lose because really one person carrying is still a lot worse than a whole team communicating and working working well together. So if you have a shotgun and you can't get someone because they're too far away, make sure you just try and call it out to a friend or try and get someone to get the flank. Whatever you can, just call in some help from the rest of your team because that's why they're there. That point kind of meddled in with team and communication as well, so I guess point three and four are kind of linked there. But to round that point up to go back to the main the main point, is just make sure that you know the weapon you're using and at what ranges it's effective and when it's a good idea and not a good idea to try and shoot because you don't want to expose yourself and then end up getting yourself killed. The final point is the environment. Make sure that you are using kill holes properly. Make sure that you're trying to hide in spots that people don't know about. If you play Siege enough, you will know the common hiding spots, the common kill holes, because people just use them over and over again. You really need to try and think outside of the box, which is difficult, I know, because kill holes, you know, they're used everywhere. They're always being used. There's always new ones popping up. But at the end of the day, if you are defending, it's always going to be the perfect kill hole that's going to win. If you're like trying to peek a corner or anything like that, you're leaving yourself exposed. But if you can find a kill hole that is hidden away and the enemies right. can't see you very well or it's going to be difficult for them to see you, you're easily going to win. Make sure that you bear in mind that you can shoot through walls, you can use nitro cells to kill people from floors below. Just make sure that you're using the destruction of the game to your advantage because it's one of the best ways to win a game because it allows you to get lots of kills without exposing yourself at all. The best of these being getting the nitro cell kills from the floor. Yes, you're probably going to piss off the other guy, but who cares because you're winning and that's what you need to do in Siege to rank up. With the inclusion of Mirror, it also becomes even more essential to learn the maps and where is a good place to peek and where's not because you need to know you can use the mirrors in some really cool spots you can use double mirrors and all sorts of things there's loads of different tactics which i'm not going to go into in this video because that's not the idea i will make any specific videos that you guys want if there's anything i've said in this video or any other video that you would like me to elaborate on more just let me know in the comments and i will go in and make a video detailing that specific thing just rounding this final point off the environment and the destruction of siege is one of the biggest advantages you can have in the game but also one of your biggest weaknesses if you don't play it properly as well as making the perfect kill holes and hiding in all these amazing spots, you always need to be aware of everything when you're going into a room. You need to be aware of every room, every wall, every possible kill hole, every desk, every bed. Anywhere someone can hide and peek, you need to be careful of because there are some completely nuts kill spots and hiding spots in this game. And that is why the drone is so essential. A bonus point, I guess, or maybe like an honorable mention will be to always make sure that you keep your first drone that you get at the very beginning so you have two drones throughout the entirety of the game. There's no point charging your drone in and scanning everyone to get those pre points and then losing a drone because you're going to need it later on and those points really don't mean jackal they're just a couple of extra points to put you up on the leaderboard so yeah make sure you always keep that first drone so that you can use both drones to fully scout out the entire area so you know where people are peeking where people are making kill holes exactly what the enemy team are doing so that when you go in you're not going to get caught off guard by any nasty surprises I do apologise if I sound a bit flat, I'm not feeling too well and I haven't slept properly in a couple of days. So anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy this video and I hope it did help you out. If you have anything you want to discuss or any points to add of your own, then do feel free to put them in the comments so that everyone else can see. Just as a quick reminder as well, I will be streaming tomorrow at 6pm BST time zone, so if you guys want to come check out the stream, that would be awesome. I really do hope this video helped you guys out and that you picked up a few tips from it. Like I said earlier, always feel free to put your ideas in the comments so that people have even more ideas they can read through to help them improve their skills in Siege. If you do enjoy the content that I put out, then please do consider subscribing for some more awesome Siege content. And also, if you enjoyed the video, please do smack that like button as always. I hope you guys have an amazing weekend, and I will see you in the next one.